Hey, this is Bug Paradox. Thank you for joining me for episode five of my Rimworld Colony tutorial. All right. Well, thanks for the comments in between the episodes. There's a few things um, people pointed out who have got very sharp eyes and didn't spot, or I didn't spot that they did. There's a few things here which I think is worth mentioning. Now, in terms of um, what the prisoners get, there are some defaults here. And this is not just for the prisoners. This is actually for everybody. So when you pick up like an imprisoned colonist or colony animal, this is the default medicine that they get given. The colonists are set to best quality, so we can reduce that to, to closed. We can also um, set the meals that the prisoners get. And this is something I didn't cover in any detail here. Now, oddly enough, it's set under the health tab, but you can actually set so the prisoners will only get simple meals if there is a choice. And you can actually manage these meals. If you just click on a button, go to manage food restrictions, and then you can see the ones that exist and what they are able to have under these different settings. So lavish, they get they, they can eat anything. Fine, they can eat anything apart from lavish meals, etc, etc. So you can create your own food restrictions if you want to um, and basically go from there. It's actually quite useful and it's certainly worth doing. All right, uh, what else was there to talk about? Yes, so thank you very much to um, Karthik, who <clears throat> quite rightly pointed out, this is something that I missed completely, is that my work schedule is set to nobody's going to get to wardening. Wardening is set to three. So they'll kind of run through here and do all the one priority, then back to the start, do two priority. And then honestly, there's not enough time in the day. They'll probably go to sleep and then start again. So wardening means that the feeding and the recruiting of the prisoners, this is when it gets done. Now I need to move that to two because the prisoners are not even being fed. Uh, let me go to needs, <laughs> let alone trying to recruit them. So let's uh, let's fix that straight away for them. Um, what we also need to do is quickly knock up a table in the prison area. I've got to try and keep the prisoners as happy as possible. Um, so let's knock up a quick table and a couple of stools in there for them. We've got plenty of wood at the moment. Um, because um, if they can eat and we get their mood up, then they're more likely to come over and join us. So let, let's fix that as well. Also, doctoring is set to two, which it shouldn't be. They should be doctoring before they do anything else. Um, also, in terms of who, who your doctors are, and thank you to Sylvie for pointing this out, you really want them to be doctoring before they go to bed themselves if they're injured, even slightly injured. So what will happen here is it'll run through, they'll do the doctoring, then it'll come through, um, maybe do whatever else that they need to do, and then put themselves to bed. Um, if they have a life-threatening health condition. This, of course, might need to be microed, but certainly you want at least one doctor on a two setting here. Um, so this is probably a good idea to do something like this. Uh, you know, and, and then, then the other, sorry, on a one setting, then the other doctor can be on a two setting, um, and then they'll, they'll go to bed first before doctoring. All right. Um, so the other thing was, uh, yes, meditation. You notice that we have a... Uh, a notification about meditation spot so Eugene needs to meditate to build up his psi focus so if you recall heat was a temporary um, uh, build up when you use your psi casts and this will go down very quickly but it will build up psi focus is your your kind of fuel in the tank if you like so every psi cast you do will deplete this deplete this deplete this deplete this and, you know, and the only way to get this back is by meditating so this is a very good introduction now to um, the different types of meditation every pawn if you go into the information starts with a meditation focus type now generally speaking med um, if they're not if they don't have any psi skills then meditating will just give them back um, uh, a sort of re recreation uh, need. It will re return the recreation need up to 100%. So they don't have to meditate, really. The only people who really, really need to meditate are the people with the psi casts. So we'll see here, again, it's artistic and morbid. It tells you over here what they can meditate at. So in, in this case, we don't really care about anybody meditating apart from Eugene here. So Eugene needs to have dignified or artistic, so he needs a sculpture or a throne uh, or a stele. So we don't have any of those just yet, but what we can do is we can create a, a spot and we can put it somewhere and what he will do is go and meditate at that spot. Now the, he obviously his preferred meditation type are those is the artistic type. We can just plop this anywhere and he'll meditate in that spot. So honestly speaking, I might as well just put it in his bedroom, I think, um, for now. And he can meditate there and then we'll move it to a better spot a bit later on. All right, what else was there? Yes, somebody in chat said that if you store your meals with um, uh, with meat or in a dirty area or dead bodies, you've got a hard chance of getting food poisoning. This is not the case. Your meals are only affected by, by the dirt of where it was cooked and the skill of the cook. Those two things are the only things that affect your food poisoning chance. So if you're under the, uh, the misapprehension that where you store your food, 
uh, can give them food poisoning. This is not the case. Um, and it's, it confirms that in the Wikipedia as well. All right, I think uh, that is it in terms of catching up with where we need to be. Oh, yes. And then finally, yes, Leandro Brady suggested, actually, why don't you set the quick sleepers to actually to be forcing them to sleep less. Now, the quick sleeper was Fleming. So in this instance, we'll find Fleming. Fleming sleeping kind of this this amount of time. So we can actually just say to Fleming, you can wake up a little bit early if you want to. But if you want to keep on sleeping, carry on. This is anything. So if he still needs more sleep, he'll carry on sleeping. Now, Fleming's a bit of a different um, a different case because he's, he's a night owl. If night owls are awake in the daytime, they'll get debuffed. So we don't necessarily want him to wake up early, but we'll keep an eye on this and we'll see what happens. Right, so we're there. Now, what I've done is I've, um, on the on the map, I've put some, some plans, which you can hopefully probably see here. Now, we're still short of a kind of dedicated rec room, uh, which is where they're going to eat and, and relax and stuff. We need a hospital uh, and we need a workshop uh, and a store. So what I've done is I've put on here um, the outline of a room and I've put S for store. I've put an H for hospital in here and also W for workshop. And then this this will turn into the rec room after you moved all the stuff out. So this is what we want to do next. However, we want to get this bedroom finished here, especially, well, definitely these two. And want to, I think to save a little bit of time, we're probably just going to focus on just cutting out this passageway here. This is going to be the sixth bedroom. We'll have five people soon, hopefully. So we'll deal with that. Now, hopefully these guys have been fed. Yeah, it looks like they've been fed now. <clears throat> And they've been chatted to, so their resistance rating, uh, rating will start to drop properly now. Okay, so let's speed things up massively. Um, so we want to finish these two bedrooms, we want to get this completed, um, and then we can uh, start to build out the extra pieces. Having a dedicated hospital is critical, having a dedicated store is critical. This stuff in here is not ideal, it's making the place look horrible, it's dragging the mood down. We don't want that at all. All right. Now, we probably need to increase mining. Um, yeah, mining set to quite low priority for this for Eugene. Jonathan will get to that. There's no more construction. Growing should be taking place as well. We'll get we'll get Fleming to do growing. He's not doing much else other than cooking. So when he finishes cooking, he'll get down to growing. It's not a great skill, but we need somebody to start putting um, the crops in the ground so it doesn't hurt. Right, we'll see there the resistance is dropping. That's good. So it's needs construction to get done. Just need to make sure, yep, that's all accessible. We've still got loads of wood hanging around. The wood's not being hauled in because we've got nobody to do it. Hauling is very low down on the on the schedule here. Still construction jobs to be done. Brilliant, we moved the, 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 the recreation um, of the chess out here. Now this is important to note. So we have two recreation items on here. Firstly, the wooden horseshoes pin, and it tells you the recreation type, dexterity play. And also this recreation type is cerebral play. So it says on the right here, there's different types of recreation type. You need to have as many different recreation types as you can. Otherwise, they, they say that they're, they're bored of the, of the recreation they have access to. Again, it's not a massive thing, but we want to be uh, cognizant of that. All right. So what do we got? Jonathan sleeping. Fleming's awake. Fleming's now deconstructing all the stuff. So these are construction jobs. I'm inclined to probably... I'm going to cancel some of these because it's a lot of work to do and we don't need the stone that badly right now. I'd rather he does mining so we can get this finished. All right, what have we got here? That's cool. Still got plenty of wood. And again, what I would do here is I'd put down wooden floors. And probably here as well. Uh, this bedroom is now finished, which is great. Now, did I take the roof off here when I was uh, when I was making it? I don't think I did. Let's just double check. It certainly looks like it's indoors. Yeah, it's fine. All right, so we got four bedrooms. Going to have a fifth here. Did I queue up a bed to be built? I don't think I did. Let's get that set up. All right, so food-wise, we've still got enough for eight meals. Well, now four meals. So we've got, we've got a little bit of time there, so we can focus on getting the construction and mining done. Okay, so we skipped on a little bit. Um, nothing much happened there, but we're getting all this finished. We started to uh, hunt a few more animals now. And what I'd like to do next is get the uh, the workshop up and running. We do need to get uh, a, uh, the research bench in. We need we need batteries, basically. It's quite important that, that we get that um, sooner rather than later. Once we've got the workshop set up, um, we can again get the store set up as well. We've got a bunch of slate down here. We've got 66 slate blocks we can use to start to do that. And I've planned out a corridor as well. Um, it's important to do... Um, three wide co corridors 
And the reason I say that is because it's very effectively, uh, you, you can very effectively defend through a choke point like this. You have three people here, maybe some melee fighters at the front and have people who are uh, with the guns at the back so that people can shoot over shoulders. And meanwhile, the enemy can't uh, all attack you at once or try and flank you. So it's very important. But um, that's a little bit advanced for this stage. But uh, you need to be just uh, cognizant of this when you build your corridors. This is uh, not quite wide enough, obviously, but um, try and fix that where we can. So I'm going to do some manual cleaning because it's actually quite disgusting around here. Just to do this, just to keep on top of it. Cleaning is the lowest priority of all jobs. Not everybody wants to do cleaning, but we'll certainly get everybody on it, as we can see. Cleaning, which is why getting more people is super important. Once we get these two on board, it's going to be really helpful. Um, where are we with that? So resistance running 6.6, 0.2. So Stranger is going to come over to us really quickly once our resistance is broken. So probably another two chats, uh, probably tomorrow, in fact. They're going to come over to us so very much looking forward to that stranger skills are very much cooking animals um, very very useful so we'll put stranger on cooking right from the start because they've got a burning desire in it so they learn it very quickly uh, we'll give stranger the knife as well because they're a good melee fighter or they will be a good melee fighter in the end that's going to happen quite soon so you bring the slate blocks from here oh and speaking of animals the um the uh, our dog where's our dog gone Shelly, there we go. So our dog can now haul, which is fantastic. And you can't, um, as it says, they'll do it randomly, you can't direct them to haul specific items, but this is super useful. He will pick up like bits and pieces and bring them to the, the various stockpiles and pick up meals and pick up weapons out in the field. Having lots of animals that haul is so, so useful. I cannot overstress the importance because look where hauling is on our schedule. It's quite low down. So hauling is really quite a sort of a drag that your colonists never really want to get to, but your animals will do that for you. So, pretty useful. All right, we've got a raid. Trezenbar people, they're, they're attacking immediately. So it's Raptor. Raptor, he's psychically dull. He's another super immune person and he's industrious. So, hmm, interesting. He's very, very good with plants. Okay, I'd quite like to catch him if possible. Now, because it's raining, it will make shooting much less effective. So that's not ideal. It's something we have to be aware of. I don't think I'm going to get out of this without any cuts and bruises, or certainly cuts, but we do have quite a bit of medicine in stock, so I'm not anticipating a major problem here. It's going to... Oh, that's a point. He actually moved a lot quicker than I thought we would. Wow, okay. All right, no problem. Now, if nobody's outside, what he'll do is, is he will then try to attack a piece, of, a piece of something that's outside, in this case, probably uh, our windmill. But a moment's inattention from me. I didn't realise that he would get here quite so quickly. <laughs> so I'm going to... Um, yeah, not having a melee fighter is a bit of a problem. Tempted, actually. Let me. See. I think we're going to need a melee fighter. Now, one of these guys, it's Jonathan, in fact. Although Jonathan's really good at shooting. I'm tempted to do a quick whiz around here. Can I equip him with a plasteel knife? Yeah, I think we'll do that. Then we'll get... So he's, he's attacking our horseshoe pin. That's nice of him. So we've got all our guys. Let's move them outside now. And here he comes. So I'm going to get Eugene to whiz over there. And we're going to get... I'm going to get Jonathan to take him on. Fleming, run away. Jonathan's going to intercept. Okay, Fleming can now shoot. So this is not ideal. I don't like fighting like this, but as we can see, Jonathan's... Um, well, didn't take any hits at all. And he actually wrecked this guy, which is very good. So I don't like doing this if I can avoid it, but... Um, Jonathan's melee skill was pretty good, so... We kind of went with that for now. All right, cool. Got some pemmican, got a knife. That could actually come in quite useful. So he's hauling the knife. Fleming doesn't do hauling, but he's going to eat the pemmican instead. Cool. So now we need to get rid of that body. Now, the dog is probably going to pick up this body, and there's a couple of things that you can do with the dead body. So this is actually a pretty good t time to talk about this. Leaving dead bodies lying around is very bad. Um, not only do they look bad, minus 60, um, they will exude corpse bile eventually, which is which is not very good. And also, any time a, colon, a colonist goes near them, providing they are not psychos, that's if the body isn't rotten yet, or unless they're bloodlust, it, they'll get bothered by the sight of the body. Now, I think, yeah, observed corpse, minus four. Now, this can stack a little bit to observe corpse times three, I think it is, maximum. And you get to minus 12, which is pretty poor. So what you would generally do, there's a couple of things you can do. You can either cremate the body, which is, um, yeah, electric crematorium. 
I used to do this a long time ago. I probably I don't bother anymore. Or you can put it in the grounds. You can uh, dig a grave, so we can see, which is okay. Or just simply just create a dumping stockpile for the body somewhere that your colonists aren't going to see it. Probably over here. Um, oh, this, by the way, is the Ancient Danger, which I will cover um, hopefully towards the end of this series. I'm probably going to do this for about 10 episodes or so. Anyway, so we'll create the dumping stockpile and we'll allow corpses. And we want to be not colonist, not animal, not human-like corpses, rotten or fresh. They'll, they'll get put in there. I'll make that critical or important. Just make sure there's no corpses coming here. No, don't human like corpses there either. Okay, cool. So, in essence, that the dog Shelley will probably pick this corpse up and dump it over here. And if Shelley doesn't do it, eventually our colonists will get to it. All right. So they're all relaxing. Now Fleming's talking to Stranger, then to Gizmo. Which one of these is it that's going to come over? Yeah, resistance running. So Stranger should come over any moment. Uh, recruit failed, 45% chance. So what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of a clean in here when Jonathan's finished, just to improve the uh, the room beauty. Oh yes, this is actually a probably good time to talk about this as well, because, um, yeah, I, I haven't come to it. If these walls are damaged, as we can see, um, your colonists will get around to fixing them. They do seem to be quite a low priority in the construction stack. Now, if they never get around to repairing them, just make sure that these walls are in the home area, because if, if they look like that for instance, they're never going to get fixed. Only walls and items in general that are in the home area will get fixed. So that's probably worth mentioning that as well. All right, so we've almost got a way around here. So let's um, let's create a granite wall there. Boink. And then we can mine out those two spots, finally. All right, so we're cracking on with the wall. This is good. And we need to have a bit of, oh, still won't do any cleaning. Eugene, yep. We'll actually get you to clean some dirt when you finish doing all that. So I'm holding down a shift key and queuing it up. Clean out here as well. Just have a bit of a clean up generally. All right. You see there that uh, Shelly the dog hauled the meat. Now she might haul. He. Yeah, no, she. She might haul this body at some point. And if you want to make sure that if something isn't being hauled, you can just check to see if it's valid by doing that right clicking. And if it says prioritize hauling, it means that it has a valid destination. If for some reason I hadn't set this up, in fact, I'll, I'll demonstrate. If I delete that and I now do that, I said Jonathan, wasn't it? It says, cannot haul Raptor, no empty accessible spot configured to store it, which means that there is no um, no stockpile that's been configured to allow dead bodies. So just by checking that, you can, you can check that there is a valid uh, dumping spot for it, in which case there is, there will be now. Uh, Human-like corpses, make it preferred. Uh, not chunks, we just want dead bodies in it. That's fine. Okay. And then we can double check it. And there we go. That's fine. So the, the dog will at some point pick up the body and lift it and shift it. Okay, cool. So we have um, 66 granite blocks, 70 limestone. Let's go with the limestone. 70. So that's 45. Okay. So we're getting done. Let's harvest those two bushes. Just do that manually, seeing as they're there. It's good to have a quick look around, Let's just see if there's any more dead bodies on the map. We can just quickly scoop for free, because why not? Yep, doesn't seem to be. We've got some components there we can take. It's all looking, not many dead bodies around. It's, oh, okay. Alright, so work's coming on very nicely with the workshop. We're going to switch over to granite chunks and complete, hopefully complete. Oh, Mad Muffalo. Okay, I'm a sec. 30. 30. Gonna want a door on it as well, so we'll put a door probably there. Okay, Mad Muffalo. Interesting. All right. Just the one of them, I think it is. Check on the wildlife tab. Yep. Just one. So he's going to come in. He's now going to start to attack my people. So that's not great. So we need to wake everybody up and get... Move them over here. Jonathan is still armed with a knife, which is which is okay. The fact Eugene can't fight is very much a drag, but I might be able to run him around and do the same things I did previously. Um, in which case, really, we want Jonathan to get the bolt action rifle. Where's the muffler going? Okay, Jonathan can come out. Don't quite know where he's going. He's going to change his mind and come back up in a minute. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, has he picked up the, the Eugene scent? Oh, he has one. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Excellent. Good stuff. Very good. That was handled all right. Okay, Fleming. Doesn't do hauling. Eugene. Hauling. Brilliant. Well, that, don't you love it when the food comes to you? That's brilliant. All right, good. Okay, let's uh, let's carry on with uh, speeding things up. Right, I'm just going to um, play this on a little bit because I think Stranger might come over now. His um, recruitment chance is very high. Recruitment difficulty is quite low. So this might be what we need to get Stranger on board. We'll have to see. Speed up a bit a little bit. Oh, it failed. 54% chance. All right, fair enough. So as I said, when it, even when it says 100%, there's other things which might drag it down slightly. You see there, last recruitment attempt, negotiation ability factor 41%, opinion factor 131%. So what it's saying is basically, although the opinion of us is good, his negotiation um, factor is really actually not, not great. So let's, start, let's have a quick look into that. So wardening, we've got two people wardening here. One is skill nine, the other one's skill 13. So really we want Eugene to be doing the, uh, the, the wardening, ideally, rather than Fleming. We're gonna put Fleming down one on that. So it's actually Eugene who tries from now on. He's got a much better social skill. And that's, that's probably why it's failing. Because of course you can't just keep recruiting. I think you get two attempts a day. Oh, who's starving? Jonathan. Grab something to eat, Jonathan, my friend. Um, grab a meal. You should normally do this yourself, but what what happened is I queued up Jonathan to clean. And so he, he honours any microing that you're doing first. But I'm, I'm going to override that and just get him to eat. Eat first. Let's have a quick look at this. Yeah, so quite a lot of dirt around still, but it's not a lot we can do about that right now. When we get more people on board, it just gets, everything becomes much easier. Rather than three people doing everything, you've got four, then eventually five people. It really, really makes a huge difference to the game. Each person is just a force multiplier. Things start to go more smoothly. Jobs you allocate to get done are getting done very fast. I want that to be mined next because that's just, they have to go all the way around just because it's one block. So let's get that done. All right, so that's looking good. The workshop is almost complete. We just need one more block on there. Let's um, let's do, what's that slate? I believe that looks like. No, granite, okay. Granite. Let's get the granite in there, get the floor down. I want actually a proper, want a decent floor on here. How much steel do we have? 328, it's important to keep this as clean as possible. So we're going to use um, paved tile. Paved tile is actually really good. It's a lot cleaner than, than well not a lot, it's cleaner than, than wood is basically. And it's relatively quick to, uh, to put down. I'm inclined to leave the roof off here just a sec because we're going to be need to be build stuff in here. So let me do that. Now they, he's cutting down the, the trees because um, in order to put wooden floor down you need to basically clear the area. All right, good. So it looks like Shelley is hauling steel, but it's not hauling that dead body. Could we do that dead body ain't hauled? <laughs> Let's see, recruit fell 92% chance. That's really unfortunate, but it's a lot better with, with Eugene doing it than with, uh, with Fleming. So this, the, um, the paved steel floor is going down and we can get um, a... Now, what is research bench is under production? There we go. So I'm going to put the, um, the research bench down and we'll get a nice chair down because they're going to spend a long time doing that. So it's always good to use armchairs on research benches because they're very comfortable. But you do need, how much do you need for that? 110. And we've got plain leather. So we get 120, 110 plain leather. We've got 122, so that works. Right, we seem to have another raid from the Trezen Bar people once more. So how many is it this time? There's one person again. It's uh, Riesling. Riesling. And um, he's got Bloodlust, Creepy Breathing and Volatile. Bloodlust is a great skill, mind. That's a great skill. I'll put up the creepy breathing and I'll put up with the volatility because bloodlust is super useful. Bloodlust, right. These people tend to be happy all the time because if they're killing anybody or they see anybody be killed, it makes them happy. <laughs> he's got he's got a good melee skill as well. So I'm actually really happy with this dude. They're attacking immediately. Okay, so same thing, same. He's going to come through here. That's fine. Uh, has Jonathan got his gun still? Yep. Okay, and we got pistol. That's fine. Let's do the same thing once more. Need to make sure we get our guys out. We don't have a great deal of wiggle room here. Eugene can go in the front here. Kind of hoping that. Ooh, sneaky beaky. So he got his leg hurt? No, liver. Okay. So he appears to be going for us rather than Eugene, which is uh, frustrating. Let's move these guys back. 
Oh, he's chasing Eugene now. Perfect. Right, you guys, fire at him. Eugene, run like Billio. Oh no, Eugene has got bashed. Perfect. Fire. Keep moving, Eugene. He's got shooting level 7. Beautiful. Oh, he's coming for Fleming. Fleming, run away. Bosh. Sweet. Alright, what happened to Eugene then? Eugene got a bruise. That's absolutely fine. So, thanks, Eugene. I wonder if Eugene's ever going to get fed up of being the uh, <laughs> the sacrificial lamb. Never mind. We shall see. All right. Onwards. Yeah, so we can see that uh, Shelley has now moved both these corpses to the dumping stop path. Thanks for that, Shelley. Good work. Of course, the benefit of the dog doing it is not, not only is that uh, it's a hauling job we don't have to do, but it means that there's no debuffs because dogs don't care about dead human bodies. <laughs> So the other thing, so the research bench is ready, brilliant. So we can set up a, a research job now, which is, has to be batteries. Uh, where's batteries there? Research. Now we've got not get anybody set to research. Um, I'm going to wait until we get somebody recruited, simply because we got just don't have enough people. We've got so much to do still. So I, that, at least it's ready to go. We're going to put the roof back on, however. Uh, build roof area. We're going to put light in here as well, which is going to be awesome. I'm going to make it try and make it as pretty as possible. So let's put a couple of plant pots in here. And the light should stretch from the power there, which is great. And we'll be getting these guys recruited very shortly. Eugene's fully healed, so Eugene's going to go on a recruit. There we go. He's feeding them a meal. Eugene should then, after he's done his meditation, um, go and talk to them. Now Stranger again is ready to be recruited. Gizmo has got a very small amount of resistance remaining. His recruitment chance is really quite high. So it's going up due to his mood. They're, they're, they're actually really happy. Mostly happy. Anyway. So Eugene's having a clean. There we go. Eugene's having a go at Stranger. And yes, we have a Stranger recruited. That is awesome. Woohoo. Alright, so, so we got a bed ready for Stranger, which is quite important. Stranger's going to get a meal. And so Stranger's good at cooking and animals and kind of a little bit uh, good at melee as well. All right, well, we give Stranger that, that uh, plastic knife. So we've got three people able to fight now. Um, so we're going to want a Stranger to do cooking as a first. And we can back off Fleming now from doing that so we can do other things. Now, what's Fleming good at? Fleming's quite good at artistry, medical, social, cooking, construction. I'm inclined to put him on, even though he's not much good at it, plants. Plants and construction. Uh, handling, no. Put Stranger on handling. Stranger's skill at that is pretty good. Don't need to hunt. And your other stuff is kind of so-so. Good. That is really good. We've got another pair of hands. Really happy with this. That's fantastic. So Stranger's going to do some hauling, get all the stuff in here. So we got our lab. Perfect. Now, what Stranger's... Uh, Stranger doesn't do research. Okay. I'm inclined to stick Eugene the Empath, who now isn't needed to do... Actually, they're quite good at... I'm going to wait until we get Gizmo on board. Then, then we'll do the uh, research. So Gizmo's resistance is now zero. And we all should be able to recruit him hopefully very, very soon. Then we'll do start doing research. Quick look at Gizmo. Gizmo's skills. He's really good at researching. Beautiful. Super immune psychopath. I love this character. We're going to get him onto researching. Not only would he enjoy doing it, get a buff. He's actually okay at it already. So that works. Good stuff. Strangers on the cooking. Everything's going brilliantly. All right. So that's the workshop done. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to build the storage so we can turn this into a nice rec room, make everybody happy. We got 74 pieces of light. Oh, was that marble? <gasps> Ooh. Now marble gives you buffs. So if you make a wall out of marble, see, you don't get any, any plus points here. Marble will give you a plus one for each wall space you've got. So making bedrooms out of marble is actually quite a good idea. Hmm, that's interesting. I might swap out this stretch here and turn this into a little bit of marble so two people have the benefit of this marble wall. In fact, um, I'll do that in the morning because obviously Jonathan and Fleming will be sleeping shortly. Meanwhile, let's get on with the storage room. We're going to create that out of limestone. Let's do that along here. I think I've got enough. I'll turn that to a door, and then so obviously the, the walkway can be through here. And I'm inclined to maybe wall this off, so this is going to get dirty. I don't know. No, I'll, I'll leave it as it is. Cargo pods, what have we got? Oh, that's very welcome. 200 meat. I will definitely take that. 
if I don't if I don't get it quick, it's going to get um, grabbed up by animals and such like. So I'm going to go and grab that straight away. Wouldn't probably. Oh, okay. That means not going to do it. I'll grab it as soon as these guys are awake. The other thing needs to do is set the schedule. It's good for them to do recreation together where possible. All right, so I've got Jonathan and Eugene. Now it's the morning. Come to grab this stuff up. Um, and beautiful. Good stuff. So we're finishing off the, or getting on with the uh, the storage area, so we'll be able to move all of this stuff. In fact, I'm going to do that now. This is quite useful, in case you aren't aware of it. I want to set up a stock room in here. So let me do stockpile zone, I'll do that. Now, rather than having to go through this and do it all individually, I'll just copy the settings from here. Copy, click on that one, paste, boom, done, easy. Delete. So either the dog or whenever, and whenever somebody gets to it, they'll start moving all the stuff in here. We want a door on this wall, maybe on here as well, so they can get to it very easily from either of these two doors. Not too much mucking about, that'd be helpful. And a door on there too. Boom, done, look at that, beautiful. See the dog brought in some, some leather there, that's awesome. Great, base is taking shape really nicely. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Gizmo's gonna come on board next episode. We've already got beds for him then, that's great. And we'll get him on the research and then we'll be cooking on gas. Five pairs of hands. Brilliant. We come to the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. Hope you found it uh, useful. Uh, any um, any comments or feedback, always very welcome. And uh, hopefully I'll catch you on the next episode. You do take care of yourself. This is Bug, pulling the plug.